We were literally just talking about this, I, I think really three or four days ago now, and talking about a new Caspa miner. It looked like an ASIC, but in, in the bare bones aspect, it really wasn't an ASIC per se. But we, we talked about this and the level of concern that I had in that video was the fact that because of the popularity of Caspa, we would very soon start to see more than likely very powerful ASICs coming by more than likely prominent companies. Specifically, when I talked about it, I was talking about Bitmain. Now, that said, half of that pretty much came true. It wasn't Bitmain who came out with this product and this very powerful ASIC, supposedly in theory, it's another company. And we're, there's, it's come with a lot of controversy and, and rightly so. But in today's video, we're gonna talk about it, talk about some of the things that stand out and in the end, what really I think about this as a whole and possibly the direct impact to the Caspa network that I think is going to be quite negative. So with that said, if you're new here, my name is Alex, talk about crypto, crypto news, crypto passive income. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing, enjoy the video, smash up the like, but without further ado, let's jump in the video. just a couple of days ago when I talked about the concern of ASICs starting to come to Caspa. Now, at least in my opinion, the next big ASIC company was probably going to be the likes of Goldshall or Bitmain, but I was kind of taken aback that the fact that the next most powerful miner coming to Caspa being an ASIC was by a very unknown company called Ice River. So today's video, we're going to kind of look at some of the supporting evidence of whether this is real or fake as far as the company's concerned. Now, interestingly enough, everything behind Ice River has been put from a social media aspect in the last two to three months. Their website, their Twitter, they don't have an active Discord community and they don't have an active Telegram community, which is a cause of concern. They have been active in the Caspa uh, Discord for about a month and a half now. They've not been active very long and a lot of that is to try to protect their own brand and rightly so. Now, when you look at the reason that a lot of people look at, this is their most powerful miner according to them, the Ice River KS, CAS KS2 is a two terahash at 1200 watts, which is absolutely ridiculously absurdly, uh, I mean, all the way to the very top, it is absolutely huge when it comes to profitability. And that's one of the reasons that a lot of people are, are very pessimistically optimistic about this miner. The reason being is you can see that this miner at the current price point of Caspa brings in just shy of $1,200 of profit every single day. Kind of absolutely insane. And the problem that a lot of people have is that if you look at the last 30 days, this miner would have made $31,000. The price point of the miner would have an ROI within 30 days. Now, when I talked about the KA3 launch by Bitmain, that was a little bit different. Kadena has been established for a very long time. Bitmain is a very reputable company and Bitmain has a kind of uh, pre-mined process that they involve themselves with um, and, and kind of how they do their own thing. But this is a completely unknown company until the course of the last two weeks and they come out with something that gives you an ROI in 30 days. Most ASICs, when they launch, have about a six to 12 month ROI timeframe minimum. To, so to see something like this priced at $30,000 with a ROI timeframe of less than a month is very, very unusual and therefore a red flag by a lot of individuals. Now, on top of that, they have another type of miner they call the KS0 that has 100 giga hash and 100 watts, which would also this is their least powerful miner would bring about $60 a day and still an ROI time frame of just shy of a month. So this brought a lot of skepticism and uneasiness by the community towards Ice River. And if you look at this, you see their web, their Twitter just recent, their website just recent. And in fact, the first video evidence that they have of this miner is also a little bit puzzling, at least in my opinion. Now, if you have any experience when it comes to ASICs, most ASICs, if it's brand new ASIC, if I went and go, if I go right now and I turn on, I go and buy a brand new S19 and I turn it on, it's going to take 
at maximum, maybe three minutes, maybe three minutes, uh, at most, maybe five to be fully operational hashing at its um, hash rate that it is designed to be at, right? If it's a, a S19 J, J Pro, um, 104 terahash and 3068 watts, um, probably within three to five minutes. This miner specifically takes nearly 30 minutes to reach its full potential. So this is the first video. This is of the Ice River KS2, where in the first 14 minutes, it only gets to about 800 gigahash. It gets halfway in the first 15 minutes from coming online to getting to where its supposed hash rate is supposed to be. On top of that, it takes the next 13 minutes before it actually reaches the two terahash that's advertised on the miner. So that to me is a, is a bit of a red flag, or maybe it's just the, the type of design of the miner. Um, who really knows? But most ASICs don't take 30 minutes to be fully operational at their uh, promoted hash rates and, and numbers. So that's the one concern that at least I have within this this video that was produced. Now, Ice River does say that they are a registered Hong Kong company. Now, the only company I could find as far as Hong Kong that has the name Ice River is Ice River HK Limited. This company was registered back in 2021. And really, the only thing that's different is Ice River's two words instead of one, like it is on their website. And obviously, something like that could change in the course of two years. So I don't really hold that against them. But um, whether or not this is the same company as the producer of these ASICs is unknown. Um, and so that would obviously be this is the only thing that I could find as far as Hong Kong registered companies. Now, it's one of the some of the things that some individuals, including YouTubers, have pointed out that corroborate with some of the claims by Ice River is when some of these miners came online and when they started to pro provide the promotion of it, it, it was around the same time frame that you can see some of the mining pools dramatically increase in hash rate that wouldn't typically be possible by just a GPU uh, coming online or multiple GPUs coming online. So if you look at some of this right here, so you can see with two miners, it's just over time, just slowly increasing, 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 and all of a sudden it goes from 13 terahash to nearly 60 terahash. So this is a 4x in hash rate in the course of just one day on the 15th. You can see something similar with Casper Pool, where it goes from 37 to 68. So it doubles and then it goes again from 70 to 120. So you can see some of these like this kind of almost a, a stepping pattern uh, F2 pool. Same thing, 68 to 126 doubling in hash rate. So I don't think this is something that, you know, a, a GPU uh, someone had a, a GPU rig or four or five GPU rigs that they moved over to uh, neck to to Caspa. I, I don't think it was an event like that to see something like this all happen around the same days of some of these launches and some of these cells is very, very uh, interesting, I would say. Now, there have been some that have pointed out to some of the worker names, Ice River. This one specifically, anyone can label anything, anything. But this these specifically having around the hash rate that some would say that the KS1 would possibly have. Uh, the KS2 obviously would be at around two rather than the 1.1 to 1.3 range. Others have also pointed out that caspopool.org, the pool that they showed the video of, of this miner here, is interesting because if you look at some of the, the top nine workers, if you divide out the hash rate based on the workers themselves, it would make sense if they were ASICs uh, from that perspective that these workers themselves, if you take the 14 and you divide that or divide the 17.77 terahash by the 14 workers, that gets you something around a KS1 hash rate. So this some have pointed out to be uh, proof that these are actually on the network. Now, one thing that it has, in my opinion, given it a little bit more reputability is the fact that two miners actually put out a post in a blog talking about this and it wasn't according to this if this is true it wasn't just a random individual it was a co-founder of two miners who put out this post um and whether it could be someone writing this and putting it under the alias of the author 
uh, as the the co-founder. So someone else could have written this article and they just have him as the the writer. But to include and have this approved to go on their official website is something of value. I mean, you see the iServer KS1, and the KS2. They talk about it. They say that it's the how powerful it is. The the KS2 is equivalent to three thousand. 3070 GPUs. They talk about it. They talk about the profitability. So I don't think any random, uh, if it was a, a no-name company talking about this, that would make that'd be one thing. But to see a very reputable mining pool such as Two Miners talk about this, and supposedly the author to be John Smith, who's a Two Miners pool co-founder, I think gives it some form of validity. Now, some other things aside from this is uh, some pictures Red uh, RPM posted on his Twitter talking about this ASIC. Now, this is one that he has. This is just provided by the company. You can see some of the details on the ASIC itself do match up to the images that are promoted on their website. And then lastly, I think the only true way to prove whether this company is real or fake is to someone actually meet them at the Bitcoin mining conference that's going to be happening in Prague in the uh, Czech Republic in June. In fact, uh, they are going to be attending the Bitcoin Mining Conference in June 7th of 2023 at the PVA Expo Prague. That is this right here. So if anyone is already planning on attending or is going to be attending, I think that would be a huge, huge plus to the community if they were to be able to meet up with one of the individuals from the team or from the company itself. And now, obviously, they're not a speaker, nor are they a partner of the event itself. If you look at through the website, you can't find them. So I presume that they're just going to be a, a random individual, random attendee that's going to be there. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the end. Do you think that these ASICs are real? Do you think these ASICs are fake? Do you care? And what are your concerns now that you've seen some of these ASICs possibly, potentially, in theory, coming online to CASPA? As to what I talked about about a week ago, as far as Caspa possibly getting overrun with ASICs in the near future. Love to hear your thoughts. Comment that all down below. Enjoy the video. Smash up the like. If you enjoy the content. Consider subscribing. And until next time, guys, stay invested.